Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? Is your mind talking to you without your permission? Is it distracting you with unwanted negative thoughts and like visions of things and you know, lamenting and all of that stuff? Well, today I want to give you four tips to get your mind to go quiet immediately. These are tips that I'm actually going to give you from my mentor, Dr. David Hawkins, from his wonderful book, called Eye of the Eye. Looking forward to giving you some of my perspective on it. This is this is some of the fundamental stuff that helped me to create my methodology, the rapid enlightenment process. I'm, I'm excited about sharing it with you. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I'm bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I wanna help you to quiet your mind so that we can restore your peace. So let's just dig in. Four tips. These are from Doc Hawk, and this is his. Uh, that's what that's our our little nickname for him, Doc Hawk. This is from his book Eye of the Eye, and this is uh, this is the chapter on the mind, and this is extremely extremely good stuff. Highly recommend that you check it out and read it. Uh, but he says here that every mind has endless opinions on everything, even if it knows nothing at all about the subject that all opinions are vanities with no intrinsic value and are actually the result of ignorance. That opinions are dangerous to their owners because they are emotionally charged triggers for dissent, strife, argument, and positionality. Woo, this is tip number one, and that is to recognize that your opinions are the source of your suffering and that your opinions actually are the result of ignorance. There may be things in which you are an expert on, and in that particular case, your expert status is not necessarily going to create conflict and strife, but so often the mind is just spewing its opinions, and it spews its opinions as a survival strategy. It wants to make sure that you look like you know stuff. It wants to make sure that it has an assessment about everything because if it has an assessment about everything, then you will quote unquote understand the world and be able to navigate better. But the whole thing is a farce. You, me, none of us. We don't know much about anything. We have a lot of made up stories and that's about it. So that's tip number one. Here's the next section. The letting go of all pretensions to knowledge or of knowing about anything is a great relief <clears throat> and it is experienced as a tremendous benefit instead of a loss as one had feared. One had been without knowing it in bondage to the content of the mind and therefore the release from mind is accompanied by a profound sense of peace and absolute security. When this occurs, one is finally, profoundly at home at last, with no doubts remaining. There is nothing more to be gained, nothing which needs to be accomplished or thought. Its finality is absolute, profound, motionless, and still. The absolute, the, sorry, the endless nuance of desires, I said that wrong even, okay? <laughs> the endless nuisance of desires and wants and pressure of time have come to a final end and their hollowness stands revealed. So this is the second tip for getting the quiet, to, to getting the mind to quiet from our good friend, Dr. Hawkins. And that is that there's a letting go of the pretension, pretending essentially, pretensions to knowledge or of knowing anything. And he says that when you let go of these pretensions to knowledge or of knowing anything, there is a great relief. And this is so profound. Your mind will go silent very quickly when you start to admit you don't know anything. All you know is what you've been told. All you know is what you've been observed. What you're observing is through your senses. Science will tell you that what you observe through your senses is predominantly BS. And that when we look with more critical eye or uh, with instruments with more precision, we see that what we're experiencing is not the truth at all. So that's number two. Number three is a little shorter. He says, all positions, all, as positionality ceases, one becomes aware that it was the source of all prior miseries, fears, and unhappiness, and that every positionality is inherently 
in error. So important. Positionality, the release of positionality. What you start to see is that when you take a position on something, you automatically say that the other things that are not this are wrong, or I deny them, or I resist them. And this creates a lack of integrity for you because what it says is that the world is not whole, complete, and perfect exactly as it is. It doesn't acknowledge that everybody's perspective is the right perspective for them. When you take a position on things, you essentially say, I'm the ruler of the universe. I know how things are supposed to be. And anything that doesn't fit with my model of the world is wrong or incorrect. You create conflict for yourself. That creates disruption. Your mind talks as a way of trying to overcome what is disrupted or malfunctioning or potentially dangerous. When you are in a state of all is well, your mind stops talking because there's nothing to talk about. And you can then use your mind as a tool rather than being used by your mind. So that's number three. And then finally, number four. He says, all positions that were held can be forgiven. Because of programming and context, they sounded like a good idea at the time. All such ideas were based on the same erroneous notion that in some way they served to propagate the survival of a separate, independent, ego, self-identity. Actually, when it disappears, no loss is possible, nor is gain necessary. It was illusion itself that was the actual cause of the endless pain and suffering. So that is the fourth thing that I want to bring to you today. And I, boy, you know, Doc Hawk has got so many great lessons for us. And I highly recommend that you are reading his books. They've made such a difference for me. But the fourth one is to forgive the positions that you've taken on so you don't make yourself wrong. And you forgive the positions that other people have taken on. And that's my question for you today. What will you do to remove the motivation for thinking so you can get your mind to go quiet today? Will you release your opinions? Will you let go of this pretense about knowledge and knowing things? Will you release your opinions? Will you forgive yourself for the positions you've taken or others for the positions that they've taken? Leave me a comment. I want to know what you're thinking and what you will do. My name is Matthew Ferry, author of Quiet Mind Epic Life. Will you make sure to like this video? I mean, you watched it all the way through. Will you like it? Will you share it? Share it with your other fellow hooligans. It'll make a difference in their life like it's making a difference in your life. Leave me a comment. Those three actions actually tell YouTube that this is a video worth sharing. It tells YouTube other people should watch this. So it makes a difference for me. I appreciate your likes and your, and your comments and your sharing, but it also makes a difference for other people out there in the world. Now, if you're digging the things that I'm saying, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can press the subscription button right there. You can also press the little bell button and then you get little indicators, notifications when I, get a, when I put a new video out. And if you haven't noticed, I put a new video out every single day. All right. I also encourage you to jump over to Facebook and join us in our Spiritual Hooligan Facebook group. There's a whole bunch of us just like you, and we're all communing together in this group talking about these ideas. I'll put the link down below. Thanks again for tuning in to this daily enlightenment.